Hey everyone, what's up? It's Rob Dotson. Today on podcast, we're going to be taking a look back at our old core pages example. We're going to revise it so it uses the new iron pages element. Let's check it out. OK, so this is what we're going to be building today. It is a cat -a log Get it? Yeah, yeah. And it's basically kind of like a little image carousel. So you can see it's got these next and previous buttons. As I click on them, it cycles through different photos of cats. And you can see here that there is this text field right here. And as I change that index, it is also updating which cat photo we are currently looking at. And so to build this whole thing, we are going to use the new iron pages element. Now, looking at our source for our index file here, you can see that I've already got my Web Components polyfills in place. I've already gone ahead and imported my cat -a log element, and I've actually dropped it into the page here as well. So we're pretty much already set up to go. The one thing that I want to point out is that I've got this images directory over here. And inside of there, I've just got a few photos of some cats. That These are, these are taken from a, a member of the Polymer Eng team's uh, own, own feline friend uh, here that we, are, that we are using for our example, which is pretty cool. Now, in the cat -a -log, uh, element definition, you can see that this looks like a pretty typical Polymer element. At the top, we are importing Polymer HTML to make sure that dependency is loaded and ready for us. And then our element has a ID of cat -a -log, which matches the is property that we have down here in the Polymer constructor. And the first thing that I'm going to do is just add a style to our element to style the host. So we're styling the tag itself. And I'm setting it to display block. And I typically do this for many of my elements just because by default, custom elements are display inline. And usually, I want things to be either block or inline block. So I always do this first to avoid any style weirdness down the line. Now, with that in place, I'm ready to go ahead and just import Iron Pages. I've already installed it using Bower. So I'm just going to pull it out of the Bower Components directory and drop it into my element here. And then I can use this handy Iron Pages snippet to spit out some Iron Pages boilerplate. Uh, this, is, this snippet, by the way, is part of my snippets package. So I've got snippets for both Sublime, which you can get over here, and snippets for Atom, which you can get over here. Uh, they are really, really useful, and they are set up to support the iron elements and the paper elements. So it makes it a little bit easier to write code like this. And you'll see here that Iron Pages looks a lot like the old Core Pages element. It has a selected attribute, and this defines which of these sections will be displaying at any one point. Right now, it's just defaulting to 0, so it'll be this first section here. And I'm going to add a little bit of content to this thing. I'm just going to drop in some image tags, and these are going to link up to our cat photos. And I'm giving them all alt attributes for accessibility. And uh, I also want to give them all an explicit height of 375 pixels. So I'm going to give them a, a pick class just so I can style them. And then I'm just going to give them a height just for the sake of this demo so that we don't have images that are all you know, wonky in different sizes. So now we can actually preview this thing. And because Iron Pages is set to display its first section element, we get our very first cat photo showing up on screen, which is pretty rad. Now, the next thing I want to do is create those buttons that let me toggle back and forth between different cat photos. So to do that, I'm going to create a div underneath my Iron Pages. And I'm just going to call it Controls. And inside of here, I'll just drop in a couple of vanilla, just regular old HTML buttons. But the one thing that's different is that I'm going to give them uh, some of these declarative event bindings, or event handlers, I should say. So these are really useful. These are features that Polymer adds for you to set up event listeners. But the nice thing about these is that not only do they set up the event listener, but they handle removing the event listener when the element is taken out of the DOM, which is really handy for preventing things like memory leaks. So right now, I don't know what I'm going to do with these methods, but I'm going to go ahead and just sort of stub them out in my prototype. So I'll go ahead and I'll stub out go previous as well as go next. And the reason why I don't know, you know what I'm going to do with these is because I haven't really dug into the docs for Iron Pages yet. So I don't really know how to tell it to go next or back. To do that, we will hop over to the Elements catalog at elementspolymerproject.org and scope out the Iron Elements and kind of scroll down the page until we find uh, Iron Pages, which is right down here at the bottom. And I'll boost this up a little bit uh, just so you can kind of see this page a bit better, because there's a couple things that I really want to point out. The first is this source button. So this is something that we just recently added to the catalog. And what this does is, as the name implies, it allows you to go to the actual GitHub repo for the element that you are interested in. So you can go here. And if you want to file an issue, this is the place to do it. So you go to the element source, you go to its repo, and you file an issue specifically to that tag. 
And then the other thing you can do here, obviously, is go and read the source for the element. And this is super handy uh, when, you're, when you're trying to learn like, what's going on inside of an element. The other thing that I want to point out that maybe some folks miss is this little behaviors panel down here. So right now, you're looking at Iron Pages, and you can see that it's got this one property that it says that it defines. But actually, we know that there are these two behaviors down here that it's implementing, which means if you recall from one of our previous episodes where we discussed behaviors, we know that it's actually mixing in additional properties and methods that we should have access to. So if we go down and click on the Iron selectable behavior, uh, we can see that there are several properties that our element implements. And in fact, we've got some methods down here as well. So we've got methods for selecting a specific value, selecting next, and selecting previous, et cetera. So that's actually what I'm going to use in those stubbed out methods that I created. I'm going to use these select next and previous methods. So back in my elements definition, I'm going to give Iron Pages an ID. And this is just so I can select it more easily using Polymer's automatic node finding. So I don't have to do query selector or anything like that. And I just called it pages. And now inside of GoPreve, I can say this dot dollar sign pages to target that element and call select previous. And in go next, I will do the same thing, but this time I'll call select next. So now I can switch back to Chrome and I've got my next and previous buttons. And our sort of catalog image carousel type thing is now a bit more interactive. And we can flip through all these beautiful cat photos. Now, the next thing I want to do is add that little text input in the middle so I can see which cat photo I'm currently viewing. To do that, I will go back to my element definition. And I'm just going to drop in a regular old input type equals text element. And the interesting thing here is to note that I'm going to create a binding in its value. And I'm going to call my, my scope variable selected. So that will be the, the shared name for this, uh, this bound value. But notice here that I'm also going to add two colons after this and type the word input. So what is going on here? Well, Polymer's data binding system is all secretly based on events. So when you have a, a property in your element, maybe something called age, for instance. Uh, so let's see. So we have a property called age. right? When this property changes, if you've set it to notify true, uh, it is actually going to fire an event called age changed. And Polymer listens for these events to know when it should update its data bindings. But in the case of native elements, they fire their own events when they change. Right? The, the, the text uh, input element fires this input event anytime it changes. And so we need to teach Polymer about this event. We need to teach it that, hey, we want this binding to update whenever you hear this event being fired. So that's what we're doing with this special syntax here. And this is how you can bind to uh, native HTML elements. OK, so with that set up, I can go back up to my Iron Pages element. And I can replace its hard-coded uh, selected value with that same scope variable. And then I can just define a property on my element for selected. I'll type it to number, and I'll give it a default value of 0. So now if we go ahead and preview this thing, we've got that 0 value down there. And you can see it's changing as we click Next and Previous. right? And we can also type in the text input. And because you know, it's firing that input event, we know to update our bindings when that changes there as well. Now, one of the things I want to do is make those controls layout a bit nicer. And in Polymer 05, we always talked about layout attributes. I used them in like every demo I ever did. Uh, in Polymer 1.0, those have now been moved to their own repo that is called IronFlex Layout. So I'm going to import IronFlex Layout. And you can see here, it's got a special path that I'm using here. So it's IronFlex Layout classes ironflexlayout.html. And that's actually going to load a bunch of CSS classes that I can use for Flexbox. So we've switched from attributes to classes now. Uh, but it's basically the exact same thing from Polymer 05 land. It's all the Flexbox you know, short, shortcuts that you know and love. So on my controls div, I will add layout, horizontal, and justified. And now these guys lay out really nice, and we can still toggle through them. So this is just super useful. I know a lot of folks were wondering where layout attributes went. So that is where they are. They're off in IronFlex layout now. And for every element, you know, if you want to use those classes, you'll need to import them so that they work within that scope. So important thing to note there. Now, the last thing that I want to show off is a feature that was very popular in Polymer 05, which was you know, sometimes people didn't want to have a numeric selected index. So they would use this special property or the special attribute called value adder. 
right, value attribute. And they would add that to their core pages element, and they would then specify an attribute on all of their sections that you should look for when you're trying to update this thing. And this has been replaced in Polymer 1.0 with Iron Pages. It is now called adder for selected. So we're going to use this instead of the, uh, the old value adder to say that we're going to create an attribute called datacat. And this is just a made up attribute. I'm going to add it to all of my sections. And I'm going to give it you know, a value that sort of typifies what is in that section. So this, since it's a pretty cat, its data cat value is pretty. This is a vacation cat, so it's vacation. Hacker cat gets hacker, right? And what's going to happen is when that selected value changes to some string, Iron Page is going to look through these different sections. And let's say the string is hacker, right? It's going to look through the different sections and be like, who has a matching hacker data cat? Ah, this guy right here. And it's going to make this the selected item. So if I go down and I just change my selected property to a string and default it to hacker, now when we go and preview, you'll see that the text input has hacker. And as we're flipping through the different sections, it changes to our different data cat values. And we can type in a new one here. It's going to disappear for a second because it, it sort of goes null for a bit. But we can type in new ones and see those different cats as well. So there you have it. Nice and simple. And with some pretty small updates, we're up and running again. That's it for this week, folks. Be sure to click that little subscribe button. If you have questions for me, leave them down in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.